I'm here with uh, Will James, who is the plant manager for uh, Toyota, and he's at one of the largest plants in North America. Uh, Mr. James, tell us a little bit about your career climb to becoming plant manager here. Jeff, first of all, let me thank you for taking the time to come and spend a little time with us here in Georgetown, Kentucky. But I actually started here in Georgetown with Toyota back some 25 years ago. Okay. My background was mechanical engineering, but fortunately we were able to work out an opportunity for me to start here as a first-line supervisor, what we call group leader. Spent my first 18 years here working my way up through the organization up to vice president of manufacturing, and then I was given the opportunity to go out to Southern California as senior vice president for a plant uh, called TABC in Long Beach. Spent a couple more years there as president, spent a little time in Princeton, Indiana, and was given the, uh, the honorable task of coming back here as president in June of 2010. Did you ever have a vision at any point in your career that this is where you want to be or what you want to do? Or what was your vision initially when you started with Toyota? You know, when I first studied Toyota before I came to interview, I knew this was the type of company that I wanted to be a part of. But, you know, you never really buy into or believe it just because of print. But after a couple of years and I got a chance to see what people were saying about Toyota was actually true. This really is the type of organization that that involves people and engages people and allows folks to bring themselves to work and participate in the process of making the company better. I fell in love. I, I drank the Kool-Aid. Okay. You know, now some ask me, you know, did you ever aspire to be a, a president? And, and honestly, I can, I, I can say without, without a question, it never even dawned on me about the idea of becoming a president until, you know, just a few years ago. I always focused on trying to be the best that I could be, to do the best that I could, to contribute to what the company wanted to, to try to, to do, and then fortunately it's just worked itself out to be that way. Did you have mentors along the way? Well, I've had, I had a number of mentors okay. along the way, and I, and I have a, a number of mentors that I, that I rely on now. Internally, and mentor externally? Others. Internally? internally and okay. externally okay. And, and rely on uh, them now and, and, and try to give back by mentoring as many as I can along the way today. So for young kids who are looking to work in a corporate environment um, such as this, what advice would you give them for preparation to climb the ladders as you did? You know, uh, you know certainly you need to, to work towards getting a good strong education. Everything counts. You know, take it serious now, whether you're in the second grade or the fifth grade or the eighth grade, but take it serious now and try to find out what is it out there that really interests you, you know, and, and prepare yourself for, for that, that area of the business that actually interests you. And then, and then I would say just a couple of other things. You know, some people say, and I can remember it said to me a few times along the way, that you should you should undercommit and overdeliver. I found that doesn't work. That's not the right way. You should commit to be the best that you can be and then you outdeliver that, right? Because I mean everybody, everybody can undercut it and, and, and do a little bit better than that. But if you if actually commit to the best that you can be and then you always excel to overdeliver that, you and your customer will be pleasantly surprised you will learn that you're capable of doing far more than you gave yourself credit for and your customer will love you for it. So the whole idea is overcommit or actually commit and then over, over deliver. Good, good learning, life lesson for all of us. Last question for you, uh, share with the audience as far as what vehicles that are actually built here at this plant. Three vehicles. First of all, we have the best selling car in America, <laughs> the, the Toyota Camry. And you're responsible for it. We're responsible for that. We build the predominant uh, number of, of Camrys that are sold here in North America. And then we have the flagship vehicle, the all new Avalon, fifth generation 2013 Avalon, and then the Venza. Okay, and one last question for you. I know that, uh, that we'll ask as it relates to this. Since, seeing that you have one of the number one best selling vehicles here in America, Toyota Camry, what pressure does that give you as plant manager to make sure that you continue to build a, a reliable, well built, uh, vehicle for the uh, buying public? You know, I wouldn't call it pressure. Okay. Uh, uh, I, I, I would just, just call it challenge. And, and our, our team members here are, are up to the test. They know 
what's expected of us, and they're just as proud of every car that comes off of that line as, as, as I am. But when you're building 500,000 cars or so a year, what this means for our people, you know, is daily overtime and, and now uh, actually producing every, every other Saturday, we've got to stay focused on, on the task. And I tell you, I can't, can't think of a better team to, to do what we're being asked in the team that's right outside that door. Thank you, Mr. James. Thank you. And have a good day. And you too.